Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And on this edition, we're going to be talking about the 2020 NFL season. That's right, Who That Nation. The 2020 NFL schedules have come out, and we're going to be focusing on the NFC South. As you can see on the graphic, we got representation of the Carolina Panthers. We got Teddy B, Teddy Bridgewater. We got that team. We got a representative, Matt Ryan. We have from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady. And of course, we have Drew Brees, the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. We're going to be breaking down the schedules and we're going to be talking about some of the games that are highlighted in the NFC South. And for your viewing pleasure, I decided that I am going to pull the schedule up so you can see the schedule along with me. This is the 2020 NFL schedule for the New Orleans Saints, and we're going to break it down, okay? And we're also going to be talking about some of the games from the Carolina Panthers and some of the games from the Bucks and some of the games from that team. But we're going to go ahead and start with the New Orleans Saints. And the first game, it starts in preseason – Nobody really cares. The Saints are going to take on the Rams. Week two, they're going to be taking on the Steelers. Then the Houston Texans, followed by the Miami Dolphins. This is a pretty set schedule. It looks like the Saints basically play the same teams every year during preseason for the exception of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They played the Miami Dolphins last year. I, I don't know if they played the Rams, but they played them a year before that. I mean, they always play the Houston Texans because they're bordering states. So, who cares, okay? That's preseason. Now we move on to the regular season. Week one, the New Orleans Saints at home will be taking on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 325 on Fox. I mean, honestly, folks, I mean, what, what more needs to be said here? This game deserves to be in the prime spot. You know Joe Buck and Troy Eggman are going to cover this game and probably the majority of Tom Brady games uh, in the NFC and with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The New Orleans Saints at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This will be a statement game. I'm pretty sure the New Orleans Saints have been listening to uh, the, the, the media and everybody else talking about Tom Brady and how great Tom Brady is and how great the supporting cast is for Tom Brady and how Gronk is back and how they got a new offensive lineman in the draft and they got Chris Godwin and they got Mike Evans. The New Orleans Saints are going to be ready and willing and primed for this game. And a lot of people are going to be excited to watch it. I got the New Orleans Saints winning this game. I think the Saints are going to go 1-0 right out of the gate. And we move on to a away game against the newly Las Vegas Raiders. And I have to be honest with you, who that nation, I want to go to that game. But I decided that I'm going to go to Miami in August, so I have to sacrifice this trip. But the New Orleans Saints taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders in a new stadium. Um, this is going to be a very interesting game. Very tough, man, because I don't know if this is the Raiders' first game in their brand new stadium. You know they want to christen it the right way. So I don't know, man. This might be a little bit tough. I'm going to say that the Saints are going to lose this game against the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, that's right. Lose this game against the Las Vegas Raiders. That is going to make them one and one. Then we move on to week three against the Green Bay Packers, a team that I feel like was suspect as hell last year. I mean, absolutely suspect. They're, I don't know how they became 13-3, and three, smoke and mirrors. Unbelievable the way that those guys got a first round by. But I feel like the New Orleans Saints are going to beat the Green Bay Packers because I feel like the Saints are better than the Green Bay Packers. Just like I felt if the Saints would have got past the Minnesota Vikings, they would have went to Lambeau and beat the Green Bay Packers. So I feel like the New Orleans Saints will win this game and the Saints will move on to two and one. Moving on to another game in week four at the Detroit Lions. Now, I must admit, man, the Detroit Lions always play the Saints tough. They always play them tough. Every time the Saints play the Detroit Lions, 
I have to say, man, Matthew Stafford always plays well. The Saints seem to always get the upper hand. Matt Patricia, the head coach of the Detroit Lions, I'm not really sold on him. I feel like he's the guy that is going to end up being fired in the middle of the year and is going to start looking really, really dim for the Detroit Lions in a game with the New Orleans Saints. They will go to Ford Field. They will take on the Detroit Lions. I have the Saints winning this game. I feel like the Saints are going to beat the Detroit Lions. The Saints are just better than the Detroit Lions. I'm sorry. I understand what the Detroit Lions have done. I mean, they got the rookie out of Ohio State as their cornerback, the third pick overall. And they did a couple good things in the NFL draft. But still, the New Orleans Saints are just better than the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are trying to build the team. And the Saints already are solidified as a true contender. So I feel like they are going to beat the Detroit Lions. That's just my honest opinion. Uh, we move on to the Los Angeles Chargers, man. You know, I, you know, I'm thinking about this game, and I'm thinking about Justin Herbert, the rookie. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to be starting around this time, even though I feel like Tyrod Taylor is probably going to end up starting the season. But Justin Herbert is probably going to be in the game around this time, and he's going to make a few mistakes. I feel like the Saints are going to kind of disrupt him, uh, cause him a lot of uh, trouble, even though I think this game is going to be relatively close due to the fact that the Los Angeles Chargers have a really good defense, man. And, um, you know, I, I just feel like the Los Angeles Chargers, even though they had a down year last year, they are playing against the New Orleans Saints on Monday Night Football in the Superdome. You know it's going to be rocking. I feel like the New Orleans Saints are going to win that game. You have to keep up with me. I have the Saints at right now, one, two, three, four, and one, okay? And then we have a bye week. So the Saints go into the bye week, four, and one. Then they move on against the Carolina Panthers at home. The Carolina Panthers always play the Saints tough. You have Teddy Bridgewater. I like to consider the Carolina Panthers as New Orleans Saints light, with the offensive coordinator from LSU that now they have as their offensive coordinator. And you have Teddy Bridgewater, who was a former Saint. Um, you got Keith Kirkwood, who was a former Saint. It just seems like to me, like the, the master is always going to be better than a student. Even though they're trying to run a Saints offense, I don't feel like they are going to be better than the Saints. I have the Saints winning this game at home. So keep up with me. The Saints are now 5-1. and one. Then the Saints move on, and they go to Soldier Field to take on the Chicago Bears. I'm looking at this game. It's in November. I don't know if it's going to be cold just yet. It might be a little chilly out there because, of course, Chicago is the windy city. Look, the Saints beat up on the Chicago Bears last year, and I understand they got Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky. He didn't sign a fifth-year option because the team didn't give him one. But the Chicago Bears still have a really good defense. I feel like people like Akeem Hicks, who didn't play against the Saints last year, who do not like the Saints, I feel like he is going to be motivated for this game to try to shut down Drew Brees and cause havoc up the middle. I hate to say this, but I feel like the Saints are going to lose this game against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field, and it's going to move the Saints to 5-2. and two. Okay, next game. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This time it's at Raymond James Stadium on NBC primetime television. Brady plus Breeze equals ratings, okay? I don't need to tell you this. You already know this, okay? You already know. Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees. Hey, it's a match made in heaven. Raymond James Stadium, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning this game. I feel like the Saints and the Buccaneers are going to split, okay? I feel like Tampa Bay is going to win this game at home in front of their home crowd on Sunday Night Football. It's going to be a close game. I, I probably would say they'll probably win by like a field goal or something like that. So the New Orleans Saints, Tampa Bay Buccaneers will split. That will move the Saints right now to 5-3. and three. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Saints are on a two-game losing streak. Look, man. All is not dark. All is not dim. The Saints taking on the San Francisco 49ers. And I feel like this is a revenge game from last year. Okay? The New Orleans Saints, San Francisco 49ers were going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This was like a heavyweight championship fight. 
guys were rocking and wheeling. You know what I'm saying? It's like Apollo Creed taking on Rocky Balboa and Rocky won. You know what I'm saying? Shot after shot, hit after hit. Nobody wants to go down for the 10 count. The New Orleans Saints are going to win this game because the New Orleans Saints are going to be truly motivated to not let this game slip through their hands again. Okay, the New Orleans Saints were beating up on the San Francisco 49ers in the first half, or I should say the first quarter. And then all of a sudden, the San Francisco 49ers just came rolling back into the game. I feel like the New Orleans Saints are going to be inspired, and plus they're going to be on a two-game losing streak at this time, so they're going to muster up a win and knock off. That's right, knock off the San Francisco 49ers, and that will move them to 6-3. and three. Moving on, we have the Atlanta Falcons, or what I like to call that team, okay? They're playing at home against the New Orleans Saints. Look, I have the Saints winning this game, okay? The Saints lost and laid an egg in the Superdome against the, that team last year, and I don't see that happening again. I don't see it being replicated. Look, congratulations to that team. They had a formula, and it worked, okay? They put their best pass rushers up the middle so the pressure can come right at Drew Brees so he can't see over the pressure. Congratulations. Bravo. But it's not going to happen again. The, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If the Atlanta Falcons or that team decides to come into the Superdome and try to do the same thing and replicate what they did last season, it is not going to work. I have the New Orleans Saints winning this game. It's going to move the Saints to 7-3. and three. And then we have the Denver Broncos, okay? The Saints are going to the Mile High City to take on the Denver Broncos. Hey, man, this is going to be a tough game for the Saints, in my opinion. I mean, you're, what, 18, probably a little bit more than that, above sea level. You know what I'm saying? Way, way up in the mountains. Air is thin. The Saints are not used to playing in those type of elements. The Denver Broncos, a team that is tough, rough. Vic Fangio is a defensive genius. I feel like the New Orleans Saints are going to slip up in this game and they're going to lose to the Denver Broncos. Now, I know what some of you in the Who That Nation are saying. TJ, what the hell? Man, Denver don't even have a quarterback. Look, I understand that. But I don't know if it's going to be Drew Locke. Or if John Elway is going to decide to get somebody like Cam Newton to come through, the Denver Broncos are going to be a decent team. If I don't know anything, they're going to be good defensively. And they might be able to run the football. And like I said, that thin air and running in that type of climate might be a little bit rough on the New Orleans Saints. Maybe not for somebody like Marcus Williams who played at Utah. But for a lot of those other Saints players, that thin air is going to get to them. So I have the Denver Broncos knocking off the New Orleans Saints, bringing the Saints to 7-4. and four. Moving on to the Atlanta Falcon game, I feel like the Atlanta Falcons are going to win this game in the Georgia Dome against the New Orleans Saints. Yes, the Saints will split with that team, okay? They're going to split with that team in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The That team is going to knock off the New Orleans Saints. That's going to bring the Saints to 7-5. and five. Then you have at the Philadelphia Eagles. Look, the Philadelphia Eagles are a tough team. Playing in Philadelphia is not going to be an easy feat for the Saints. We know the Philadelphia Eagles fans are ready in, in the link, Lincoln Financial. They're ready to go out there and cheer for those Eagles. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. I get it. But at the end of the day, the Saints are just better than the Eagles. You have Malcolm Jenkins. That is going to be his homecoming. You know he is, he is going to be motivated to play his best game. He understands the defense. You know he's going to be calling a lot of guys out. You know Sean Payton is going to be picking that guy's mind, trying to see what matchups he can win. And I feel like the Saints are going to beat the Eagles. Okay, And that's going to move the Saints to 8-4. and four. Then they take on the world champion Kansas City Chiefs. Now, this game right here is a tough one to actually determine. It is going to be a very tough game. I don't know who is going to win this game, but I'm just going to say that the Saints are going to win this game because 
A lot of people feel like these are the two best teams in football, the representative of the NFC, the Saints, the representative of the AFC, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Saints are playing at home. I'm a little nervous because the Kansas City Chiefs are a team that, that flies all around the field offensively. Uh, Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball all over the field. I mean, controlled element, uh, closed, you know, don't have to worry about any type of elements, no wind, no rain, no nothing. Those guys are like track stars. Tyreek Hill kind of makes me nervous, but at the end of the day, I feel like the Saints will have a game plan to knock off the Kansas City Chiefs. So this, I got the Saints winning this game, and it's going to move the Saints to 9-4. and four. Then we move on to the Christmas Day game against the Minnesota Vikings. Look, the Minnesota Vikings are slowly becoming the arch nemesis of the New Orleans Saints, a team that is outside of the NFC South. The Saints, for some apparent reason, can't beat the Minnesota Vikings in the playoffs. This is a regular season game, so I'm not too concerned about this game. I feel like the Saints are going to be motivated. The Saints are going to want to shut up the fan base of the Minnesota Vikings. You know they're going to continue to play that Minneapolis miracle uh, play over and over again. And then they're going to play the Kyle Rudolph back in the end zone. Touchdown catch over P.J. Williams over and over again. So you know the Saints are going to be motivated. You know that they're going to try to do everything they can to try to shut down the Minnesota Vikings. I have the Saints winning this game. I feel like they're going to win on Christmas Day. So that is going to be very, very interesting. The New Orleans Saints are going to win this game, and that's going to move the Saints. I know I said 9-4, and four, but this is going to move the Saints to 11-4. and four, Okay, it's going to move the Saints to 11-4, and four, and the Saints are going to move on and end up playing the Carolina Panthers, the final game of the season in Charlotte, and the Saints are going to to lose this game. I feel like the New Orleans Saints are going to lose to the Carolina Panthers. I see a scenario like the Carolina Panthers fighting for their playoff lives. The Saints are probably going to end up, you know, winning the division at an 11-5 record. And I feel like the Carolina Panthers are going to try to be fighting their way into the playoffs. And they're going to nudge past the New Orleans Saints and win this game. And that is going to end the Saints season. The New Orleans Saints are going to end the season, in my opinion, at 11 and 5 and that's going to be enough to win the NFC South. After the Saints, I feel like the Carolina Panthers are going to be in second place at 10 and 6. I feel like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be 10 and 6, the same schedule as the the Carolina Panthers, but the Carolina Panthers are going to win in a tiebreaker and finally <laughs> that team in the basement at 8 and eight that's right eight and eight i have that team in the basement where they belong well that's my opinion ladies and gentlemen that's what i think about that is what i think about the 2020 season for the new orleans saints those are the records that i give the nfc south but i would love to hear from you what do you think about the new orleans saints 2020 schedule am i right am i wrong are you seeing something different from me please let me know Comment down below, like and share this video. This has been the State of the Saints podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com, search the State of the Saints podcast, facebook.com, search the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you all so much. I really do appreciate you. Till next time, all I got to say is, who that? <laughs>